Ships these days cost millions of dollars to build and then occasionally, like everything else on the planet, they need maintenance too. Have you ever wondered how it is done or more precisely, where does that happen? That happens in dry dock where the ship is taken out of the water to access those parts which are usually underwater. Dry dock is a structured area wherein construction, repairs and maintenance of merchant vessels and boats are carried out. This unique construction or arrangement allows the water to be filled up in an area also known as a lock so that vessels can be maneuvered in and out of that area. As per safety of life at sea or SOLAS requirements, all merchant vessels require a complete survey of the hull in a dry dock twice within five year period and an intermediate survey within not more than 36 months. This includes maintenance of hull, propeller, rudder, etc. and other parts which are immersed in water and are normally inaccessible by staff when the ship is sailing. There are different types of dry dock facilities available all over the world out of which craving dock and floating dock are most commonly used. Graving dock is normally constructed on land near the coastal waters with a rectangular solid concrete construction with blocks, walls and gates. The vessel is shifted inside the dry dock and rested on the blocks. After the ship is in the required position, the gate is closed and water is removed. A floating dock is in the form of U structure which is mainly used in salvage to carry ships that have met with an accident and is damaged to an extent that has made them unable to sail further to a coastal dock. However, now many regular seagoing vessels, small and mid-sized, are also dry docking in a floating dock. Several U-type floating docks can be joined to carry a large vessel. Once the type of dry dock is selected by the manager of the ship, the next process is to prepare the ship to enter the dry dock and then place the ship's keel carefully on the blocks provided in the dry dock floor. When the ship touches the blocks, there is a reaction at the point of contact which raises the center of the gravity G and reduces the metacentric height Gm. Hence, adequate initial metacentric height is required to compensate the same. While entering the dock, the vessel needs to be upright, which means that there should be no port or starboard list when the ship touches the blocks. If the point of contact of the ship and keel blocks is outside the center line of the vessel, it may force the vessel to tip over. A moderate trim aft is usually kept when making the ship's keel sit on the keel block. As the water level in the dock lowers, the slight trim allow ascending of stern and bow in tandem rather than simultaneously which will reduce the load and pressure on a hull and keel of a vessel. The floor of the dry dock is lined with keel blocks which are also arranged such that they can bear the weight of the ship. The interval of time from when the stern takes the blocks to the moment when the entire ship's weight is borne by the block is called critical period. So what happens during this critical period and why? When the ship's stern just touches the keel blocks, part of the ship's weight is being borne by the keel blocks. The contact between the stern and the keel blocks creates a normal reaction or upthrust. The magnitude of this upward normal reaction increases as the water level in the dry dock reduces. Hence, it is very crucial to maintain sufficient 
positive metacentric height before docking, lacking which the ship may heel over to either side or even slip off the keel blocks and capsize. The maximum pressure that can be exerted on the blocks is a function of the material used for the blocks. This value being a constant, the minimum block area required for each block is calculated. If you observe the nature of the weight curve, it is usually high at the midship region and decreases at the forward and aft region. The pressure exerted on keel blocks is called the block pressure and the average block pressure is the total weight of the ship divided by total bearing area. After all plant work has been completed, the dock is flooded and prepared for vessel departure. The most important thing at this time is to ensure all the openings done for repairs are shut and hull is intact. Also. A complete stability check of the ship is to be carried out to ensure that acceptable metacentric height GM is achieved once the ship is clear of the blocks. The vessel is then towed out of the dry dock with the help of tugs and shipyard personnel. Once the vessel reaches a safe anchorage area, the ship undergoes sea trials to ensure all machinery including those undergone repair are working fine. On completion of sea trials, the vessel is commissioned back to the service. Dry docking is one operation which allows the ship's crew to learn those areas of the ship which cannot be explored when the ship is sailing. It also helps the ship manager to assess the condition of the ship's hull and those machineries which are not accessible when the ship is in water. The world's largest dry dock is presently in India which is 662 meters in length and 65 meters in breadth.